Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Gonna be giving you the latest news on Paul Pogba. So Paul Pogba could stay at Manchester United potentially past the summer because he could make a U-turn at the club. And Paul Pogba contradicts his agent Minio Riola for the second time. Now Minio Riola told to our sport back in December that his client's career at Manchester United is over. He said he's unhappy and he has to leave and he's got no intentions of signing a new contract. Solskjaer was furious with Minio Riola's announcement because it was just before the game against RB Leipzig in the Champions League. Paul Pogba's recent performances have been very, very good. He scored a fantastic goal yesterday night against Fulham. Um, hit it with his left foot, went into the far bottom corner and he was around 20 yards out. He also scored in the 1-0 win against Burnley, but that got deflected. Paul Pogba's one of the best in the world when he's on it. He had a minor injury not so long ago. He had an ankle injury earlier on in the season. He was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury. So there is a chance that Paul Pogba will sign a long will sign a long term contract at Manchester United. Earlier on in the season, we triggered that one year extension on his contract, so he's under contract on Man United until June twenty twenty two. As it stands at the moment, he is our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him. I think this is what his fifth season at the football club since he rejoined. He's made over 100 appearances in all competitions and he's won three trophies at the club. That was the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield. We did have him when he was a lot younger under the Sir Alex Ferguson era, but we had to let him go due to limited appearances. But yeah, Paul Pogba has had a long-running transfer saga. He's been linked with a move to PSG. Uh, there was stories coming out saying that he could join PSG in the summer. Minio Riola has spoken with PSG and it did say a few weeks ago that Mauricio Pochettino identified Paul Pogba as his top target. He's also been relentlessly linked with a return to Juventus. Paul Pogba did endure four good years with Juventus. Fabrizio Romano recently said that Juventus are preparing to make a move for him in the summer. Juventus hope we'd be more open to a player plus cash deal. Don't forget Juventus have offered us Aaron Ramsey as part of a swap deal for Pogba. We rejected it. They also off offered us Douglas Costa as part of a swap deal for Paul Pogba. We rejected it. He's been relentlessly linked with a move to Real Madrid. Barcelona and Inter Milan have been in for him before. We have rev we did reveal our asking price. We do want £75 million. Solskjaer did say earlier on this season that Pogba can be convinced to stay at the club if the club win trophies. Pogba... He did give an interview prior to the Liverpool game and he made an admission saying that we're not on Liverpool's level as yet. But he says we can win the Premier League title and he was talking about his frustrations of when he was on the bench. During the last international break, like I've updated you several times, Paul Pogba made quite a few comments saying that 
this season's been the most difficult period in his career. He said playing for France is a breath of fresh air. And in general, he was talking about his Man United struggles this season. Reflecting on them comments, he did receive a lot of criticism. Don't forget in the game against Liverpool, we put Paul Pogba in more of an advanced role. So that's the breaking news on him. Now, I want to give you some news on Christian Eriksen. So according to Duncan Castles, Manchester United have made a six-month loan offer for Christian Eriksen. But the deal is being held because we've offered 40% less than his wages. Ian McGarry has said that Christian Eriksen is closer to leaving Inter Milan. I think there's also been narratives about him possibly going back to Tottenham and there has also been talks of a swap deal with Arsenal. Christian Eriksen has been at Inter Milan for a year and he's endured a very, very difficult time. I think Inter Milan paid around £16.9 million for him from Tottenham. He's got a contract with Inter Milan until 2024. He's 28, he's highly experienced. He's predominantly an attacking midfielder, but he can also be deployed as a central midfielder. Um, he's well proven in the Premier League because he did endure seven years with Tottenham. Uh, obviously before Tottenham was at Ajax, we was actually in for Christine Eriksen then. There was talks of a swap deal involving Eriksen and Donny van der Beek uh, right at the beginning of this month. But I'm very, very sceptical that Man United will get him. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, earlier on this month, give us an update on our January transfer plans. And he did say that January signings are unlikely. And Sky Sports recently said that Solskjaer says that signings are long-term, not a quick fix. I think we're looking to make around four signings this year to complete our squad overhaul. This January transfer window is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fifth transfer window as Manchester United manager. Woodward has promised that he'll back Solskjaer. Don't forget he did say towards the end of last year that he will back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with a long-term plan centred around summer transfer windows. By the way... Solskjaer says our fine form justifies the club's support. So what he means in that aspect is that you know the backing he has received recently has played a part, played a big part in our fine vein of form. Prior to the game against Fulham, Solskjaer made an admission saying that one or two more players could depart the club this month. Now, we recently saw Timothy Fossa-Mensah leave Man United. He joined Bayer Leverkusen. Solskjaer's also confirmed that Sergio Romero and Marcus Rojo are free to leave in this January window because he said their contracts won't be extended. Now, Sergio Romero, he's been at the club over five years. Uh, we got him on a free from San Pandora back in 2015. Romero's always been our backup goalkeeper. He's obviously third choice goalkeeper now. And Marcus Rojo, he's never really established himself as a first team regular since he came in. And Rojo's been at the club since 2014. You know, sustained quite a few injuries. I think he's out with a calf problem at the moment, or was. And he was out on loan with Estudiantes last season. Phil Jones has been linked to a move away from the club. If he doesn't leave in this January window, I think he will leave in the summer. 
This is Phil Jones's 10th season at Man United. He has been with us since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. I think he has been very, very inconsistent. Jesse Lingard. Now, like I've said to you recently, Solskjaer's in disagreement over his future. And I think Solskjaer said he wants Lingard to stay at the club for this month. Lingard's been linked to a move away from Man United. Um, I think Tottenham are now back in for him. Tottenham went in for him last year. Sky Sports said not so long ago that Lingard's representatives were talking with Nice regarding their loan move, but apparently now Nice have called their interest. Sheffield United have been in for Lingard. Villa have been in for Lingard. West Ham, a few weeks ago, were in negotiations with his agent. It did say towards the end of last year that Real Sociedad were talking with Lingard's agent. Celtic and Rangers have also been in for him. Lingard lost his place in the team a while ago, but Lingard has been part of the club for several years. I think he's got under six months left on his current contract. Odina Gallo, I'm expecting him to leave the club. His loan expires at the end of this month. Um, Odina Gallo seldom plays now. The main explanation we recommended him in on loan in January of last year was to obviously get a cover up for Rashford because at the time Marcus Rashford was out with that back injury. There has been rumours of Daniel James going out on loan because Daniel James has lost his place in the team. We got James back in June 2019 in a deal worth £18 million from Swansea. And there's also been rumours of Brandon Williams going out on loan because he's now our third choice left back. Uh, one matter, he could be leaving the football club in the summer transfer window. Now Solskjaer admits that Juan Mata's future is uncertain. But he said that Juan Mata's closing on a Man United exit after Solskjaer's recent admission. I think Mata's contract does expire in June, but I think there's an option to extend his contract for a further year. Whether we'll trigger that one-year extension or not, I do not know. Juan Mata has had a good career at Man United. He's been at the club now over six years. He's made over 200 appearances in all competitions and he's scored 50 goals. Earlier on this season, he rejected an 18 million a year contract offer to play in Saudi Arabia. We got him in a deal worth £40 million pounds from Chelsea back in 2014. Uh, could Nemanja Matic leave the football club in the summer? But yeah, so yeah, Man United recently beat Fulham 2-1 uh, at Craven Cottage. We are now back top of the Premier League. We are unbeaten in our last 17 Premier League away games. We've equaled the record from the 1998-99 season. And if we do beat Arsenal at the end of this, this month, we can break that record. Obviously, goals were obviously from Luckman. He gave Fulham the lead in the fifth minute. And obviously, our goals came from Edison Cavani. It was a goalkeeping howler from our earlier that led to that goal. And the other goal came from Paul Pogba. We didn't start the game well. I thought we started the game slow. Um, I thought Fulham were on the front foot. You know, I think Luckman was one of their best players. You know, he scored, like I mentioned, and he had quite a few shots. Um, I definitely thought Ruben Loftus-Cheek was Fulham's best player in the second half. You know, he had a great chance, but choose the fantastic save from David De Gea. But I think, you know, as the game went, went on, you know, we grew into the game. We started to commit men forward, you know, had chances. Bruno Fernandes was unlucky not to get his name on the score sheet. You know, he did 
hit the post, also had a shot that produced a fantastic save from Ariola. Uh, Bruno Fernandes though did play a part in Cavani's first goal. Edison Cavani should have had, had another goal because I think he had a big chance in the second half. But yeah, we did deserve the win. We knew how much of a tough game it was going to be against Fulham. I knew it wasn't going to be a walk in the park because, you know, prior to that game, Fulham had only lost one of their last seven. And Fulham have seen to have improved since they got that 1-1 draw with Liverpool back in early December. But despite their improvements, you know, they are still sitting 18th in the Premier League. Fulham are relegation fodder. You know, we've got a pretty good record against Fulham. Fulham have not beaten us for around 11 years. Uh, but Solskjaer, I know, did mention Fulham um, in his press conference prior to, the, prior to the game. And he said, you know, Fulham are well structured. He says they've got a good head coach in Scott Parker. Scott Parker's been Fulham manager now for like 20 months. And he said Fulham made good signings last year. You know, Solskjaer says we have mentally improved. And he says we are physically robust. We are unbeaten in our last, what, 12 Premier League games now, is it? We haven't lost in the Premier League since that 1-0 defeat to Arsenal back in November. To be honest with you, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is on course to earn himself a new contract, reflecting on the progress he has made in the last year or so. Uh, Solskjaer, I think, is more than halfway through his three-year deal now. Uh, when Solskjaer got the job permanently back in March 2019, he signed a three-year deal with the football club. But I think Man United do deserve a lot of credit for sticking with Solskjaer because, you know, Solskjaer could have easily have been sacked because he has endured bad periods at the football club. You know, you can say he was looking not to be sacked after he was getting knocked out of the Champions League. He was look, looking not to be sacked after our 6-1 defeat to Tottenham. He was looking not to be sacked at the first part of last season. If we hadn't have beaten Everton in the league earlier on in the season, that might have sat Solskjaer then. But, you know, it does take some managers' time to settle in. We are the comeback kings in the Premier League. That has been proven this season because we've come from behind far, uh, far too many times, especially away from home. You know, we used to be comeback kings, though, under the Sir Alex Ferguson era. You know, Alex Ferguson endured 27 years at Man United, won a total of 38 major honours. But Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at the football club. And I said, you know, Solskjaer or no manager at Man United or no manager in general is going to replicate Sir Alex Ferguson's legacy. But I've certainly got to say that Solskjaer is bringing the old Man United back. You know, because obviously our performances are improving, players are improving. Uh, Solskjaer's decision making's also improving as well. And I think, you know, Solskjaer deserves credit, you know, because he got us to the EFL Cup semi final earlier on this season. It was a shame we lost to City because I wanted Solskjaer to reach his first final as Man United, but City are a good team. He did well last season in his first full season, got us qualification for the Champions League, got us third and he guided us to three semi-finals. I think it was good, you know, to say that was his first season. And despite our reluctance to back Solskjaer with transfers, I still think he has made good signings as Man United manager. You know, he's spent over £200 million at the club. I also like the way he has promoted the youth, you know, because when Solskjaer came in, he did a show that the young players will get their opportunities and the young players have been given their opportunities. And he did say in general that everybody will get their chances to express themselves. Solskjaer's brought more young players into the club. He recently gave us um, an update on a Mad Dilo Triore. 
he was asked about how he settled in in that. You know, he has been training well. And Solskjaer said, Ahmad Triore could be part of the first team squad in the next few weeks. Uh, I think we got him in a deal, was it, with £37 million with add-ons included. We've paid £19 million up front. And I'm sure that Facundo Palestri will get his chances in the first team. Don't forget he's recently had COVID. And, you know, we have seen a lot of players depart the club since Solskjaer got recommended in. You know, this is his second full season at Manchester United, and I did say this season was always going to be a big season for him. There's three trophies we can pursue this season. We can win the Premier League, we can win the FA Cup, and we can win the Europa League. It's very imperative that we get our first trophy on the board under Solskjaer. Man United can win the Premier League this season. If we won the Premier League this season, that would be a remarkable achievement and then certainly Solskjaer would be the long-term manager. But, you know, we could win it, City could win it, Liverpool could win it, Tottenham could win it, Leicester could win it, maybe even Everton could win it. But, you know, if we win the Premier League, it will be our first Premier League title since 2013 and it will be our 21st overall. But, you know, Solskjaer has obviously been playing mind games in recent weeks and that, you know, he did say prior to the Burnley game that Man United must stay humble and not think they've cracked it if they do go top. Um, he said after our 1-0 win against Wolves, we're not in the title races yet, but he said if we are still challenging in March, he'll start to believe that we are in the title race. So, credit Solskjaer in that aspect because he's not getting too big for his boots. You know, we're halfway through the season now. You know, there's still 19 games left, I think, for us in the league. So, anything could happen. I think Solskjaer has gained some managerial experience, reflecting now on his being at the club. I think he's also learned quite a bit on the job. Maybe there's still a few things he's got to learn, though, on the job. You know, he's been Man United manager now over two years. We appointed him in in December 2018 to replace Mourinho and he's been permanent Man United manager since March 2019. He is our fourth permanent manager since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Three managers have been sacked since Ferguson. That was Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho and we're not even really known as a sacking football club. And you know, when Solskjaer got appointed in, you know, he was inheriting a lot of deadwood, you know, he's still inheriting some of the deadwood now. The vast majority of this team is Jose Mourinho's. And I did say to you, didn't I, that regarding the transfers, Solskjaer's been facing the same problems Mourinho was facing because uh, Mourinho made it clear to our board in the summer of 2018 that he wanted to recommend a centre-half in and obviously never got that centre-half in. There was obviously other reasons why it didn't work out under Jose Mourinho as well. We've spent over £1 billion on players since Sir Alex Ferguson retired and we've brought around 36, 37 players in since Ferguson retired. And I think we've made mistakes since Ferguson left and that's why we have been inconsistent, you know, up until this good period we're having now under Solskjaer. Putting the stats into circulation now, you can say he's the best manager since Ferguson. Certainly a much better manager than David Moyes was. Um, I think there is good players at Man United, and you know I think there's a lot of players we're going to keep. We're going to sell players, like I said, but there's obviously a lot we're going to keep as well. Uh, Marcus Rashford will keep him. Um, he's very very good. He's enjoyed some bad games as Marcus Rashford. Uh, sometimes we play Rashford out wide and sometimes we play him central. I think we need to keep him out wide because that's actually where he's more effective. Uh, we'll certainly keep Edison Cavani for at least this season. Uh, Edison Cavani's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Man United career. Uh, not so long ago, Cavani served, was serving a free match ban for the racist comment that he put on social media last month. Obviously, Solskjaer confirmed he had apologised. 
Oli was talking about Cavani earlier on in the season, saying that he's definitely a starter. He said we're already looking to extend his contract, and he revealed the first thing that he asked Solskjaer. Solskjaer so he revealed the first thing that he asked when he came in, and that's whether he could wear the number seven shirt. Um, I think we're going to keep Martial for at least this season, probably the next couple of seasons. Martial, though, has been out of form for the vast majority of this season. You know, hasn't really been clinical enough in front of goal. But he can deliver the goods when he wants to, Martial. Uh, we'll also keep Mason Greenwood. I haven't really had much of a perception on Mason Greenwood this season because he hasn't really played a lot. But Solskjaer has been defending him a lot. Uh, earlier on in the season, he had personal issues. Obviously, he was out of injury at one point and he was out with illness. This is Mason Greenwood's second season in our senior squad and he did play against Fulham yesterday night. Um, obviously, we're going to keep Bruno Fernandes. I think he's the foreseeable future for Man United. Bruno Fernandes has made the difference in this team. Uh, Solskjaer was speaking about Fernandes prior to the game against Fulham and he denies that he needs a rest. So he's defended Bruno Fernandes. But at some point he does need a rest because we have overplayed him. Uh, got voted player of the month for December but he's won that now quite a few times reflecting on his good performances. Fernandes has been at the football club now. Is it a year or almost a year? Predominantly plays in that number 10. Like I said now, uh, Paul probably could be staying for at least this season. Um, I think Fred will also stay at the club. Because I think Fred um, has really, really improved under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer area. You know, he shows good attacking intent. His defensive contribution is good. I think he just needs to read his game better, does Fred. Uh, we'll also keep Scott McTominway. Uh, Scott McTominway has enjoyed good games at Man United. But he's enjoyed bad games as well. Certainly his best game in a Man United shirt was a 6-2 win against Leeds. Because he scored twice in that game and got an assist. And he did well in the Watford game in the FA Cup third round. Scored after the fifth, fifth minute. Was it just after the first lockdown that Tomway signed a five-year contract with Man United? He has been part of the club for several years. Uh, Donny van der Beek, um, I think we'll keep him for now. Uh, despite his lack of opportunities, um, Donny van der Beek seldom starts in the Premier League. He's only started two games in the league so far, and that was West Ham and Southampton. Uh, Solskjaer was talking about van der Beek a few weeks ago and he insists that he has a bright future at Man United and he's defended oh sorry he tipped Donny van der Beek to emulate Fred and Lindelof by succeeding at the club Edwin van der Sar the Ajax CEO recently said that he spoke to people at Man United about Donny van der Beek and he says Man United remain confident that Donny van der Beek will be a success at Old Trafford and He'll mention like he's showing fantastic attitude in training despite his lack of game time. Ronald De Boer urged Johnny van der Beek to leave this month to boost his chances for the Euros. You know, we did get him in a deal worth forty million pounds. And there was sources coming out from Italy saying that Inter Milan are willing to take him out on loan. Uh, we'll also keep Luke Shaw, because I think Luke Shaw has really, really improved. Uh, defensively he's done well, um he's got forward well. Um, he's put some good crosses into the box. My only element of concern about Luke Shaw is that he's injury prone. He did well yesterday night against Fulham again. And he did well against Liverpool last weekend. He had Salah in his pocket. Surprisingly, Luke Shaw remains our first choice left back despite Alex Tellez coming in. I thought Tellez would have now been our first choice left back. But don't forget Tellez had Covid. Harry Maguire uh, will obviously keep him. He's really rejuvenated himself. He's bounced back from his early season troubles because don't forget he had that instant in Greece before the start of the season. But despite Maguire's good performances, he wasn't worth the £80 million that we got him for. 
is the most expensive centre half in the world at the moment and our current captain. Eric Bay, um, I think we're going to keep him for at least the next few seasons or at least this season because since Bay started playing again, he has done very, very well. Showed that ability to play out from the back, made good interceptions, made good blocks, uh, very effective in the air as well. The main element of concern about Bay is that he's too injury prone. I certainly prefer him ahead of Victor Lindelof. Bay goes well alongside Maguire. They make a good centre back partnership. It's better than Victor Lindelof alongside Harry Maguire, put it that way. And Wan Bissaka will also keep him. I've just got concerns about his lack of attacking intent and his distribution. And David De Gea, we're going to keep him for now because he's getting back to his best. You know, David De Gea is going to remain our number one for at least this season. And this is 10th season at Man United, so he has been a long servant. So anyway, on my next video, I'll be giving you the preview for the Liverpool game in the FA Cup 4th round. Drop me comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.